Thanks again. Thanks very much, Jonas, for the nice presentation. Thank you. Um, so that takes us to the final presentation of this session. And I believe this will be a recorded video because of the time difference. So in this um, mirror, we're just watching the video. I will leave Itamar to set that up. Is that all right? Can you get that video up? Or Ram? Uh, while you guys are working on it, presumably, um, I'll just uh, introduce the talk and introduce the speaker. <clears throat> so the talk title is This Little Light of Mine, Electricity Access Mapping Using Nighttime Light Data. And the authors are from Un University of Massachusetts Amherst. The speaker is Santiago Correa. He is a final year PhD student at UMass Amherst, where he works at STEMA Lab under the supervision of Professor Jay Taneja. Santiago is interested in the implementation of intelligent systems and applications that use AI techniques to build more efficient and reliable energy systems. Broadly, his research aims to build computing tools to reduce energy poverty in developing countries, making energy systems more accessible, affordable, reliable, and clean. So uh, I believe the way that these recordings work is we will have the recording. The speaker won't be um, available to take questions, but we'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll make available a short discussion afterwards, if, if that makes sense for us to discuss anything amongst ourselves without the speaker. And then any other questions, please just put straight into the Slack channel. So uh, yeah, please play the video. Hello, uh, my name is Santiago Correa. I am a final year PhD student at UMass Amherst, working under the supervision of Professor Jay Taneja. And today I wanna to talk about our project called This Little Light of Mine, um, Electricity Access Mapping Using Nighttime Light Data. In this work, we aim to improve upon an existing open source electricity mapping tool that uses nighttime light data as the main proxy uh, of electrification. Uh, using ground truth data from Kenya, we validated the performance of the existing tool and proposed a machine learning approach to improve detection of electrified sites. Measuring progress on electrification and monitoring the status of power infrastructure is crucial to assess progress towards universal electrification. Throughout the years, high income economies have collected such information using sophisticated techniques such as airborne laser scanning, field and unmanned aerial system surveys, and conventional simulation methods to decide, to decide when and how to extend the grid. However, in emerging economies, these traditional methods are expensive and even unfeasible to implement since information about low and medium voltage uh, power infrastructure is outdated or difficult to access. The single most employed proxy for estimating electrification is nighttime light data, uh, which is collected by satellites over the entire earth and made available on an open source basis. The particular strengths of these data sets are its global coverage, frequent collection, which is daily, consistency of measurement across administrative borders and long historical re records. However, the data exhibits substantial noise tends to overrepresent street lights, uh, suffer from stray light defects, and are powerless in the face of clouds. Uh, for their deep rural areas, even when electricity access is present, might not register any signature because of extremely low levels of external lighting. Still, despite these shortcomings, this valuable data set remains the best available for assessing electricity access broadly. In our review related work, we have only seen two implementations that aim to solve a similar problem. Uh, one of them is the World Bank and the development seed. Uh, they build a pipeline to efficiently map the high voltage grid at a country wide scale. Uh, this pipeline relied on both machine learning approach and the data team. Uh, the machine learning component process satellite imagery across an uh, entire target country and return geospatial location likely to contain high voltage towers. Then manually, the data team overlies this information and maps uh, tower to tower using um, the overlay as a, as a guide. On the other hand, GridFinder uh, proposes a system that uses nighttime light data as a proxy to estimate electrified settlements. 
using filters, um, they are able to obtain specific points in, uh, in which there's higher uh, intensities and they are able to identify origin points to run their algorithm. The grid estimation algorithm, uh, which is a modified version of Diastra shortest path, uh, aims to uh, make connections in the most efficient way possible, taking into account roads from open stream maps and water bodies from land cover data. So in our work, we aim to validate the estimation from grid finders, specifically in Kenya, where we have substantial ground truth data. And we plan to use also daily nighttime data, which is beyond the temporal resolution uh, generally used uh, elsewhere. So we leverage the nighttime uh, data um, recorded uh, by, uh, by the day-night band of visible infrared biometer suite, VIRS. Uh, this nightlight data has a resolution of around 450 meters. And um, we aggregated uh, the population counts per uh, night light pixel uh, using the 2018 population count reported by the World Park. Uh, we also have the transformer location and mini grid location. Um, the transformer location, we have around 57,000 uh, locations. Uh, uh, date of commissioning of these uh, distribution transformers. Uh, from 1966 to 2017, and this is provided by the local utility company. So to evaluate the performance of GridFinder, we merge uh, the three different data sources that comprise our data. According to GridFinder, 97% of the world's population lives within 10 kilometers of a medium voltage, medium, medium voltage line. And because of this, we created a buffer of five kilometer around the grid finder predictions and intercept this buffer in, in orange um, uh, with transformer locations. So all the transformer locations that overlap with the grid finder are labeled as true positives. Otherwise, they're classified as false negatives. So the goal of this work is to identify false negative examples that could have been correctly identified as sites with electricity access. So after combining these data sets, we found the nightlight measurements that represent each group using K-nearest neighbor. Uh, since the daily nightlight data wasn't available for the entire country, uh, the, these nightlight pixels that do not intersect either with uh, grid finder predictions or the transformer locations are classified as true negatives examples, right? So the table on the right hand side summarizes the ground truth data set with the number of examples for each category. So given the groups obtained in the previous step, we wanted to make some comparison between them by calculating some summary statistics. So we use mean, variance, kurtosis, and, and skew. So kurtosis indicates how big a distribution is. Higher kurtosis represents uh, that radiance is relatively stable and the distribution has shorter tails. Lower kurtosis means more fluctuations. Um, a positive or negative skew um, value indicates that a pixel's radian distribution is right or left tail uh, for the brightness uh, spectrum. So in this figure, uh, we illustrate a comparison between each index uh, within each group and daily and annual radiance values. So mean and variance are higher for uh, true positive examples than for false negatives and true negatives. Also across these indices, uh, the difference between false negatives and true negatives is minor and varies uh, slightly between daily and annual data, which is likely the reason why uh, GridFinder uh, fails to estimate grid presence for the false negative group. Uh, kurtosis is higher for true negative and false negatives, which can be seen as less stable uh, radiance levels in comparison to the true positive group. So by looking at the, at the radiance distribution among the groups, it is difficult to observe a substantial difference between true negatives and false negatives examples. However, 
there are minor differences that might be detected by machine learning based models and help us to reduce the false negative rate. So we define uh, the problem as a binary classification task. And um, so the figure looking at right now illustrates the pipeline that we're using for this problem. So initially we have as a predictors, we have some summary statistics for the radians and we have also population account. And then we split the data using five-fold cross validation and we uh, held out uh, the false negative group uh, from a grid finder. So we wanted to see how well we can perform under this group uh, at the end with our methods. Then we perform some feature selection techniques to see the ranking of these uh, predictors and just have some intuition about what, uh, what are, why they're important in, in this uh, setting. Uh, we also use different uh, machine learning models we use decision tree, random forest, gradient boosting, support vectors, and multi-layer uh, perception. And finally, we did some hyperparameter tuning using research for each one of them, right? So as I mentioned, we use three different techniques uh, for, uh, for feature selection. Um, so feature importance, was applied to random forest gradient boosting. And also we use statistical filtering and we highlight predictions, predictors that are common for all three techniques and ranked within the top five. So for example, we see population, daily mean and 95th uh, percentile um, are all which seem reasonable to be relevant to 25 places um, with electricity access. So we measured the performance using uh, precision recall accuracy F1 score. However, we pay special attention to recall an F1 score because we're interested in um, reduce the false negative rate. So uh, we pay significant uh, more attention to that metric. And we compare that to the zero rule benchmark, um, which is uh, the majority uh, class rule. Um, here uh, in each figure shows the performance of models tuned to maximize the different score functions. The legend indicates the performance metric in the test set and the recall false negative uh, points out the recall obtained only in the holdout false negative set. So tree based models are usually more consistent that uh, support vector classifiers and multi-layer perception classifiers, uh, which show high variability when they are forced to optimize for a call and F1 score. For our problem domain, we aim to reduce the number of false negative samples, which is reflected in the recall and F1 score. So however, our gradient boosting approach shows significant improvement um, in comparison to the zero rule of the test set and the recall uh, false negatives. So uh, again, recall false negatives is the recall obtained if we estimate electrification only in the places that grid finder did, didn't recognize as electrified. So as we can observe in the figure, our model identifies around 78% of those places which had electricity, but grid finder didn't identify. So for tree-based models, we observe increments in accuracy from four to 7%. On the other hand, support vector and multi-layer perception classifiers are extremely good at reducing the false negative rate, but increase the number of false positives affecting precision and accuracy. We also experiment uh, removing some of the daily predictors. And we can see that uh, when we remove them, we have some degradation in our performance. So uh, we can see in the bar graph that our metrics improve around 5% for the recall in the false negative uh, example, examples, and uh, we can improve 2% in the remaining metrics. We also show the confusion metrics, and we see that the diagonal shows significant uh, accurate uh, results. For, in terms of the conclusion, um, uh, using more granular composites of nightlight data, 
shows improvements in detections up to 7%. And we are able to identify 78% of those sites that were previously missed. We plan to incorporate our findings in other sites in Sub-Saharan Africa to evaluate the performance. And we plan to combine this information with uh, other available uh, data sets in news and social media reports to improve the overall data on power infrastructure uh, development settings. Thank you so much. Great, okay. <clears throat> so that concludes the final talk of the session. Um, I, I'll, I will open it up briefly if anybody wants to make a comment or kick off a short discussion, but I'm guessing it's probably difficult to do without the, the uh, speaker, the uh, authors present. In any case, please uh, don't hesitate to put your questions in the Slack channel and then the authors will uh, find them in the morning and be able to answer them then. So uh, yeah, that's the end of the session. Um, thanks to the, the Zoom masters, um, Itamar, Daniela, thanks to Ram for making everything run so smoothly. Thanks very much to the, uh, the uh, presenters. Everyone was perfectly on time and lots of really good questions. Um, five great papers um, and a, a really good uh, start to the conference today. And uh, I guess the next step is now looking at the schedule. We have a half hour break and uh, then we'll be back for the, uh, the first keynote. But uh, thanks everybody for joining and enjoy the break. And Ram, should I pass back to you? Do you wanna take over from here? Yes, thanks. Thanks a lot, Julian. Uh, I'm, I'm 